indirect tactics efficiently applied are inexhaustible as heaven and earth. Heading back to the Sunshine Coast. I'm with uh, Ken today. We're going to pick up Alex and we're heading back out to Smuggler Cove. We had a lot of fun looking for bottles, so we are going to have a dedicated trip trying to find some streams, older ones. Like Visibility the off the end, boat to begin a looks horrendous, like but Smuggler and Cove, it's a nice protected to area, so we should luck out. How you gonna try to be someone? We disembarked and made a quick detour to grab Alex. Alex just bought a home on Gibson's and is now a full-time Sunshine Coast resident. Lucky guy. Smuggler Cove was roughly a 20 minute walk from the parking lot on a scenic trail. We loaded up our bags and started hiking. This area is super beautiful, it's calm, quiet and peaceful, it's a great place to spend the day. As we're about to dive, we're doing this archaeological exploration for some old bottles. Yeah, pretty calm out here, it's windy on the coast so picked a good day for this. We're not sacrificing any spear fishing today as it would not have been ideal for it. Smuggler Cove and Seeker Cove inherited their names from the rum runners who used the Sunshine Coast as hiding places in the 18th century. Livestock, leather, liquor, opium, and even people were smuggled from British Columbia to Washington State. Once the building of the Canadian Pacific Railway was complete, many unemployed Chinese workers tried to immigrate to the United States, but were forbidden official entry. Pirates like Larry Kelly charged them a fee of $100 to smuggle them across the border. Kelly smuggled opium, people, and liquor from 1865 to 1911 and avoided the authorities by hiding in places like Smuggler's Cove and other areas alike. Yeah, it's a pretty good haul. It's hard to know what's what and the age, but we got some old uh, wine bottles, old whiskey bottles, a bunch of old uh, Coca-Cola bottles, found one orange crush one, pretty neat, got that uh, jar there, the lip of it looks quite old, yeah, pretty good funds. Alright, that was a lot of fun, we're going to head back to the ferries now, I'm going to go home and see if I can put a date to some of these bottles. If you guys are into this stuff, check out Saltwater Sean. He's a Nova Scotian. He finds a lot cooler stuff than we did today. Really old bottles. A lot of maritime history on the East Coast. But yeah, Saltwater Sean, shout out to him. He's got a great channel. I'm gonna head to the ferries and clean this up. Yeah, so I got a pretty good collection. Uh, this guy researched in uh, the company. Uh, it was a, a food manufacturing federation. They were in operation from the 1800s to 1954. This guy cleaned up nicely. Uh, I couldn't find any markings on this guy. Uh, I'm not sure its age or origin. But yeah, I can see the uh, turquoise color. Almost looks like a oil residue or something. But yeah, it's pretty, really, really nice. And I fill that with some beach glass. Yeah, pretty neat with those barnacles there. Uh, I got a Sprite bottle. Probably not too old. Maybe from the, uh, from the 70s. Not too sure. This bottle is pretty neat too. 
made by h.b.co uh, this one too i also try to do some research on i think the company came to a halt in the 1950s uh, so this is pre-1950 not sure the age but uh you know probably fairly old it's nice looking regardless uh this one right here is pretty cool made in 1954 it's a Schweiper's bottle. Uh, this year my dad was born. Cool things to hold on to, collect. Coke bottle. I always love collecting beach glass. Gave me a nice pastime on the ocean, so this is uh, taking it to a different level. Uh, I'm gonna be a bit more selective from now on. You know, I'll just grab bottles that could look really, really cool. But uh, it's a pretty fun hobby so far. All right, thanks for watching.